Live scope is easy, guys. It's easy. All you have to do is find a bass, take your bait, throw it out there, and catch them. It's easy. It's almost not even like fishing anymore, right? And just throw out there, catch a bass. And that's what it looks like. That's what they tell you. But guys, I'm here to give you reality. This is the reality of it all. What you're seeing is not reality. It's close, it's real. But let's go over some things first. If you're frustrated about LiveScope, if you're thinking about getting into LiveScope, if you're new to LiveScope, if you're wondering like, man, I'm having all these problems, all the, I see on all these videos, guys are just catching fish, 10 pounders here, 10 pounders there. It's so easy and I'm having a difficult time with it. This video is for you. Can LiveScope be easy? It will, it will become easier for you, I promise. If you have the right setup. I've done some videos on what my setup is. I've showed you how to install them. I've showed you the settings. I have all those videos out there. Here's the thing that people aren't telling you. They're just showing you the finished product. They're showing you sometimes a couple years, a couple, a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand hours on LiveScope. And they're catching fish and it looks very easy. And it is for them. And, and how they're doing it. But I'm gonna give you the real world application of it. This is, this is what really should happen. When you first get this thing, you're gonna get it just like anything else. You're gonna move around and you're gonna look around like, what am I looking at? First off, it's very easy sometimes. You're gonna see what a, a stump looks like, a tree, a brush pile, boat docks, and you're gonna see fish in the water. Now on that live scope, it doesn't exactly tell you what fish you're looking at. You're gonna to have to learn those things. Those things take time, a lot of time. Here's what I suggest. I've always suggested the same thing when it came to side imaging and down imaging. Everyone always is like, how do you know what a bass is and how do you know what this is? My first thing I always tell everyone is get your unit, if it was side imaging or down imaging, and go somewhere you know that you always catch bass and then drive over those places. Not new places, places you already know. Places that you know that that's where bass get and then it helps you identify them at least at that one point in time. You can start getting a feel of what they look like. The same thing with live scope and trying to catch bass. However, this shows everything. You're gonna be amazed at how many fish you see in the water column. When it comes to bait, perch, gizzard shad, catfish, gar, carp, drum, bass, crappie, white bass. I can go on and on. It shows all those. Bass sometimes are all mixed in all that stuff and sometimes you don't even see bass because you get so much other trash fish. That's the problem. I will eventually get on the whole bass thing. But all of us guys, as we started messing with LiveScope and we eventually would catch a bass here and a bass there because sometimes it took forever. Sometimes, you know, it would be casting at so many different things before we actually caught a bass, before we started realizing what we were doing. The one thing though that's easy, and I mentioned this earlier, are brush tops, like brush piles. Brush piles are very easy to see on the screen. It's very obvious what they are. What holds on brush piles more than anything else? Crappie. I bring up the crappie because of this. There's some things in live scope and what you're seeing is they're, they're not telling you everything and they're not telling you about the settings on how far out you need to be, whether it needs to be 50 foot, 80 foot, 100 foot. I always pay attention to that when I see the videos because sometimes they can be misleading. Sometimes it looks like this giant fish on the screen. Well, they only have their settings out to like 30 feet. So yeah, it is big. Most of us don't live scope at 30 feet. We live scope much further out. So our fish don't look as big sometimes because our range is bigger. So you have to, you have to look at all these things when you're watching these videos, right? A lot of times they don't tell you all that stuff. They just, they just want to show you something really cool. So all my buddies, and when we were all doing this, when we all started figuring this out, we kept on coming across crappie. And I grew up crappie fishing. I loved it. And I, I sometimes I don't get to do it as much because I'm bass fishing. And all of a sudden I see these crappie and I start catching crappie on jerk baits and all kinds of different things. And I'm like, man, here I am having to throw these crappie back because I'm not really not really ready to go clean crappie for the day. Eventually started bringing my pole out there. Like, it, it's my pole. I had a crappie rig set up for the last two years and it stays in my boat. Got my little Strike King crappie jig. 
And, and when I would see these crappie, I would start fishing for them. It was hilarious to us because my buddies and all would all start telling me stories about like, man, I, I stayed out there and caught like 15 crappie or I caught 10 crappie or I caught 20 crappie. And we became really good crappie fishermen. We were always, we could always crappie fish, but it was, we had to kind of like go do it a certain way. This was a lot more fun. It was way more fun crappie fishing this way. It also taught us one thing. We became very good at it. And here's why. Here's what I want to tell you all about crappie fishing. I suggest you go crappie fish to learn how to live scope. Here's some reasons why. One, I grew up with a spinning rod in my hand. Crappie fishing off the bank in marina stalls, like walking marina stalls, crappie fishing on Lake Livingston. So I'm used to having this. Now I don't, I didn't bass fish with it very much for, for a long, long time. And then as I got older, I just, I, I used it at times. I used it years ago, but it just wasn't really a thing I, I did a whole bunch of. And I'll admit, I wasn't great at being like really, really proficient at it. I could cast it around and do a whole bunch of things. I was pretty accurate, but I, w I wouldn't say I could just cast it under docks. Like I couldn't skip it underneath a dock very well. I w something I just didn't do. We don't have a lot of docks on Rayburn. Um, a lot of our docks on Toledo and some of our places, they're easy to skip under with a bait caster. So I wasn't really having to worry about, you know, putting it that far underneath a floating dock. It's crazy. I wanted to get better at it. But I really, I really didn't know how, and I didn't have places to go get better at it. And, and those, this takes time, not like a, a one day or two day. It takes months and months of, of doing the same thing. Well, I started crappie fishing. And crappie fishing back in the day is usually vertical, straight up and down. Well, with LiveScope, we were able to kind of catch crappie further away from the boat. We would cast at them more. I used to cast at them with like roadrunners and stuff over grass. Well, we did that a lot. And, and that was really fun. So we, we did a lot of that style. We, we thought that was more like bass fishing. So we did that a lot more. But now we do it with jigs, just like this, just a, a regular jig that we would fish vertical. We would go throw this and cast it out there. And what we all realized is that those crappie were kind of easy to catch at about 30 feet. 25 to 30 feet away from, from the boat, in front of the boat, is where we like to set up our boat to catch crappie. This is important for a couple reasons. One, as I said earlier, we like to live scope sometimes at a, at a longer range because it's, it's easier to catch a bass further away from the boat than close to the boat. And that's one of those things we've all learned that the further away it is, they get spookier the closer they get to the boat. So that's problem number one. Crappie don't, aren't like that. You can get a lot closer to crappie. Crappie are a little bit, I would say, maybe they're a little bit more dumb. Maybe they're not scared of the boat as much. For whatever it is, you can catch them closer. So that way, you can put that range closer and stay on them easier. You start getting really good at casting at them because you do have to throw a crappie jig that's very little right on a crappie's head and they will bite. But this allows you to stay on them. Now, a lot of the times when we're bass fishing and we're live scoping for them, we're throwing at one individual fish. Well, crappie, so you can do that with crappie as well, but you get on schools. Sometimes there's schools of six, eight, 20, 50. And so you're able to get on schools and catch a bunch of them. If you're not worried about keeping them, you sit out there and catch a hundred of them sometimes. And you, so you get very proficient at a spinning rod and a jig and getting on them and watching those crappie. And there's, there's usually tons of them. They're, they're almost in every single lake. So I suggest doing that. This is what I did. This is what we've been doing out here. Um, I still do it to this day. You know, as you can see, I'm out here with my father-in-law. He had he has only seen it one other time. And so I, I, I caught some crappie the other day. I said, hey, come out here with me. He likes to do it. So we ended up catching some. And you can see how even when I catch one, they're so close to the boat now that he's only dropping it six, seven foot down. And we're in 20-something foot of water, and he, and he catches one. And he's getting to see it on live scope. So he's starting to understand what live scope looks like, what crappie look like, how they move. He was amazed at, at little things that you did with that crappie jig that would make a crappie turn away. You know, he had, he had to learn how to always keep it above the crappie, things like that. What's really cool was he was really shocked at little things that you would accidentally do that, like I said, would make that crappie turn away and not eat. So you got to see the behavior of fish behavior of crappie. 
and they get really close. They get really close to the boat so you can really see it on live scope. The picture's really big, the fish are really big, and, and it's easier to see what's going on. It's a little bit harder with bass fishing. It's a little bit harder to figure out what bass are compared to catfish, white bass, all kinds of different things if, if you've got a bunch of trash fish. What you see on some of these videos is they're on lakes where sometimes there's no other trash fish in there or very minimal. So you're only seeing bass on the screen. Those lakes are easy. Those lakes are great. Every time you throw it when it's a bass. So many lakes aren't like that. And I'm gonna do another video explaining that. And and I might I might hurt some people's feelings. Some people might get really upset about what I'm gonna say because man, a, a lot of times in fishing, that ego, that ego gets to everyone. Right? And they're gonna they're gonna wanna talk about how they know the size of every bass and they can come within within a pound of it or whatever and they they this is a bass over here and this is a crappie and this I'm here to discredit all that I don't and I'm gonna prove that I'm gonna show you why that that's not always the case but you know no one likes to be wrong but let me tell you something live scope we're wrong a lot of times all of us no matter who you are we're wrong in a lot of situations and I'll explain that but for right now my suggestion is this if you want to get really good at bass fishing and live scope. You can try it for a little bit, but the minute you start seeing crappie, go practice on crappie. When you get to catch a bunch of crappie, have some fish tacos, fry up some fish, who doesn't like that? And then it, it lets you get better sometimes with different, you know, setups, like a spinning rod. I got my Mark Zona Signature Series Lose Rod. It's this power finesse rod, you know, with a hyper mag lose reel. This is the setup I actually bass fish with. I just have a crappie jig on there. So I'll go, I think this is a Mr. Crappie. What is that, a sausage head? Yeah, Mr. Crappie sausage head. I just have this tied on, but I'll switch this and go straight to another lure, like whether it's drop shotting, whether it's to minky rigging, whatever it is. So I'm, I'm still using my bass gear sometimes to do that. And I'm, so I'm getting really proficient with this, you know, while I crappie fish, but it's still my same bass setup. So I kind of kill two birds with one stone. I'm getting better with finesse stuff, I'm catching a bunch of crappie. I'm learning live scope. Maybe I'm killing three birds with one stone. I'm doing a bunch. I'm doing a bunch just by doing that and learning a lot. So my suggestion is this. If you want to get good, mess with bass fishing. But if you see some crappie, stop on them. Learn those. All my buddies, we all talk about the fact that like crappie fishing definitely helped us in the progression of learning live scope. All right, guys. I hope this helps. See y'all.